And welcome back everybody for um, our continuing episodes on uh, our Wells class science vessel. We are now doing CASE, Kinemore Accord Space Elite. This should go pretty well. It is worth noting on this ship, I have not exploded. I have not taken any permanent damage that I've had to heal. Um, with that really good shield capacity that I have on this ship, I'm um, able to withstand a lot that the Borg throw at me. Even when they hit me with their shield draining power, I am able to withstand um, a pretty good amount and heal whatever damage that causes. So, hey, you know, now this one may be the one where I explode. There's a lot going on, but we'll see. Yeah, I can hit them with Tykan's Rift. I have my uh, emergency power to Ox there. Yeah, we killed that, killed that tack cube fast. Wow. Only thing is, I wish I could fly faster. If I had emergency power to engines, I could, but then I'd be giving up emergency power to Ox. And I like my emergency power to Ox on a science ship. Look how slow that heavy temporal disruptor is. Look at that, I'm flying faster than it. Isn't that ridiculous? It, it changed course though, look at that. It changed course and went to the uh, cube, I like that. That's nice. At least it wasn't wasted. But it didn't do anything, didn't do much. This is where the, um, wow, look at that damage we're doing. <laughs> look at that. I got another spatial anomaly. Awesome. There it is. Yay. We did that really fast. Now the gate's probably going to fire at me. Actually, he's firing at that person or something. Firing at something, that's for sure. Um, okay, I can go to full impulse. I don't know why I'm waiting around. Temporal disruption device, go! Yay! <laughs> it's so slow. Not even firing at the right thing. If I had gotten this taken down, I was trying to get it um, destroyed fast enough so that the cube would do damage to the uh, transformer. But I did not get it down fast enough. Go heavy temporal disruption! Yay! Got it that time. That was a good hit. gate taken down as fast as we can.
go, heavy temporal disruption device too, yay! I do, I really need to upgrade to uh, high yield 3 though. Of course I'll lose beam overload 3 if I do that. So I don't know. It's a choice. <laughs> Since I'm not doing a whole lot of damage with my dual beam array, I might as well just put all the damage short torpedoes on this thing <laughs> anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's like, with that one dual chronoton beam array, that can't be doing a lot of DPS. So since I basically got two torpedoes going, I might as well at least get benefit from Torpedo High Yield 3. Right? just so slow. I hate that. It's sending out a shockwave. That's kind of cool. It <laughs> slowly gets them. Oh, they all went to that side. I'll go help them. If I bring that down, it'll pop a cube, and that's not what we need. I didn't see they all went to this side. That was horrible flying. <laughs> right shield failing. I blew up. The gate was on me. But even through blowing up, as you can see, I did not take any permanent damage from that. So that's cool. This ship is definitely more resistant to uh, damage than uh, that Jim and our ship. Warning. Target's shield has failed.
Yay! Not bad, not a bad run. And I still don't have any permanent damage, so I'm good. I'm good. go. Now that's how you do it. Sweet. So there you go everybody. That's the uh, Wells class temporal size ship. It's um, pretty uh, pretty cool. I often don't have to use temporal backstep. As you saw I really didn't use it much at all. Only once when I really forced it but it really wasn't necessary a lot of the time. But it's still there if you get yourself in a pinch. And then of course this one is really useful. I like the temporal inversion field. That's pretty cool. And um, of course do not use the Mannheim effect. That's a terrible one to use. Um, especially with um, Denatra here at the end because that'll make her cloak. Um, of course always on your... I, I didn't do it all the time. I should have uh, really checked for it. But uh, always pop your emergency power to aux before using Tykan's Rift or Gravity Well or even Tractor Beam and Photonic Fleet as it will, you know, boost those abilities. Um, so yeah, that's it. I like this ship a lot, I have to say. It's got a good shield capacity, especially with these two, two uh, things. Now without them, I take them off. There you can see, 13,000 without them. That's still really good. I mean, that's, that's really good, especially compared to that gem at our ship. Wow. So I'll put them both on, and there we go. So, really, really nice. Of course, because I have to use the Mannheim device, I lose a slot for um, another one or something else. And, of course, because I have to use a tachyonetic converter, I lose a slot for um, a mag regulator. And because I want to use the board console, of course, I lose an engineering console. And really, this one here, because I want to use the full... Uh, that temporal inversion field, I have to have this darn thing equipped. <laughs> it's actually nice. I just wish the torpedoes would go faster, and then it would be even better. So, my build obviously is probably not the best build. There's t diff totally different ways you could do it. I'm not saying mine is the best build at all. Um, I'm sure somebody out there could make it even better. Um, but, it's decent, and it gets me through the STFs. Um, I've also played this uh, ship on Tribble and tried it with all the new stuff that's going to be available in uh, Season 7. I tried it out in the Tholian Red Alerts, and I tried it out in the um, all of the Tau Dewa uh, patrols. Every single patrol I did with this ship, and there's a lot of space action in those patrols. And I did it in this ship with that configuration, and I did really well, um, one after another in those patrols, and you guys will s will soon see, it uh, dumps uh, a group after group after group right on top of you in the same area, and um, I didn't die or explode. I I managed to fight them off really well with this configuration on this ship, so it did really good in the new stuff, 
and um, it's not bad. I, I, is it my favorite ship? No. And that's really what saddens me about this ship. Because being a time ship from the 29th century, it should be really awesome. Especially with that whole Time Warfare set. I mean, just the name alone, you know, Time Warfare, makes it sound awesome. But then you put that whole set on, and it's not as awesome as you might think. So, actually, and um, this may shock a few people, I don't know, but um, I think the better ship for the science officer is the Tholian Orb Weaver. So far, that has been my favorite ship to fly and as a science captain. I would say this is maybe my second favorite. But my favorite favorite has to be the Tholian Orb Weaver under a science officer. This one is just a little underpowered. I think the Temporal Disruptor, the uh, torpedoes, they need to go faster. Um, I think it should all be very rare so you get that extra damage with very rare. Because I don't know if all of you know that, but an uncommon weapon has a, a innate 0.5 plus damage and then a rare ship weapon has an innate plus 10 damage and then very rare has an innate plus 15 so if it was very rare it would have plus 5 more um, so I wish that it had that um, I wish that I, ha I had 4 forward ship uh, weapon slots instead of 3 um, and the shields are good but the hull could be a little bit higher Considering this thing's from the 29th century, you'd think it would have a really, really, really good hull strength, but it just does not. It's basically the looks of a 29th century time ship with the power of a 25th century ship of this game. <laughs> it's powered on that same level instead of maybe being from the future. So it looks awesome and it has that time stuff, but it's not as powerful as you might think. To be honest with you, I would go with the Mobius on a tactical character if you want a time ship. That's going to be better because you're going to be able to use cannons and just do a lot better in the Mobius ship. You'll lose shield capacity, but you will gain a whole lot of extra damage because you're able to use cannons on the Mobius. And you tie that with a tactical character and you have an awesome combination. Uh, this ship is an, a decent science vessel, but I just think it's underpowered. And that's a shame because I want it. I really, really want it to be awesome. Um, my character, as you've obviously seen, is the Doctor from Doctor Who. And um, he would obviously be flying a time ship. And it would obviously be awesome. <laughs> it would just be the best thing out there. I would want that for my character. And this ship, sadly... It comes close, but not quite there. And that saddens me. It really, really does. But it's still a fun ship to fly. And if you can get it, um, you know, there you go. Um, so I like this ship, and I like the Tholian Orb on science character. I like the Mobius for a tactical character. And what's really going to be interesting is the Vesta coming up. Um, it's not released yet as of this recording. But I am looking forward to that. Um, of course, there are other ships out there too. You've got the 1,000 Day ships for Klingon and Federation. And I will also be taking a look at those on another character that you probably haven't seen yet in an upcoming video. So, stay tuned. I will be showing more ships. But at least you guys could see this thing in action and judge it for yourself. And yeah, I'm not the best STF player. I know I could bind keys to my keyboard instead of clicking them with my mouse, but I just like clicking them with my mouse. That's the way I play. I'm a keyboard mouse player. I'm old school. That's the way I, that's the way I fly. <laughs> but uh, at least you've seen it in one configuration, and of course there probably are a lot better out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed these videos, and there will be more, so stay tuned.